Okay, so this video today, I'm um, using this typical rates of reaction question to um, show you how to draw a graph. Okay, so that's the focus today. And um, if by the end of the video, you are able to draw a correct graph that's to GCSE level, that is fantastic. And that is the aim. Okay, firstly, I will explain what's happening in this reaction. We have marble chips and hydrochloric acid. And in that reaction, the marble chips wear down. Um, it bubbles, this reaction bubbles. These bubbles are caught by this gas syringe. Now, when it's um, captured by the gas syringe, we can measure the rate of reaction by um, giving it a period of time where we take the measurements. So if we have a look at this, the range of this experiment and um, we're taking it from it says here from 20 to 160 seconds and the range of results is 22 to 50 centimeter cubes so see how I included the range there if we were drawing a graph then we have to include all this data I'm just using this rule at all and um, if you have got some graph paper and able to do so um, it would be really good if you could um, do this along with me okay so trying to fit this along with the grid the best I can so where do these labels go if we have a look here at time time is the variable that we're changing so that's the independent variable so the independent variable always goes on the x-axis the independent variable always goes on the x-axis so I'm going to put that including the units here so I'm looking at this this is my checklist salute this is my checklist for um, drawing a graph correctly So the dependent variable is the volume of gas collected, and I'm just going to label it on the y-axis. Now notice I am just copying it directly and um, also include the units, okay? So there's no thought process as such to change your title or anything. If it's um, the independent variable, it goes on to the um, x-axis. And if it's the um, dependent variable, what you measure, that goes on to the y-axis. Now, moving on from that, let's check that our lines are long enough so we can fit this in. It is important to note a few common errors here. Have a look at this for a moment. Can you spot the error? There should be, if this was naught, there should be an extra spacing so that it goes in equal spaces from naught to 50 going up in tens. This is another common mistake. If it's possible to start at zero, you should always do so. And the other error here is where they haven't really fitted to the um, equal increments, equal spacing, and each of these spaces are worth different values. For example, this space is worth 10, whereas this space is only worth seven. So you can't really um, do that. So both of these examples are incorrect. Moving back to this graph then, um, for the time on the x-axis, I need to go all the way to 160. And as I've discussed, um, it should really start at zero. So it makes sense then if it's starting at zero that it goes up in 20s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6. I could have gone up in um, every two um, squares, but that would have made my graph a little bit too small, I reckon. If your graph paper didn't have enough space, then I suppose you can go up in twos and do it that way. We've got the time going from 0 to 160. 
OK, now, looking at the y-axis and the volume of gas collected, we have to go up to 50. Again, we try and use the space that we've got, so there's no point... Um, if I show you a wrong example here, then if I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and call that 50, all my results will be packed in. So that is not the way to do it. Checking, looking at the grid or the graph paper. If you're at home and you want to do this along with me, then obviously print some graph paper off and give it a go. OK, so I've marked there. I'm checking it's equal spacing and um, now I'm ready to draw my graph. So I've got my scale, I've got my labels, um, axes, equal steps. There's four marks. If there's four marks, there's two marks um, already before you even get on to plotting. Right, okay, so for 20 it goes up to 22, so it's just a matter of knowing how much it's worth then so we're going up in 22 so because in this on this graph paper there's um five squares so each square is worth two so half a square is worth one i can mark that out in fact what i'll do is i'll mark them in a different color Okay, so moving on to the next one, 40 goes to 32, 60 goes to 39, 80 goes to 44. And this is the way you can differentiate given to your pupils as well because um, obviously, the closer together the lines are, the harder it is. So 400, I'm going to see if the ruler helps me out a little bit here. So, uh, because I'm finding it really difficult to see. And 400, it goes up to 48. And 420, it goes to 50. And then I've got two more readings at 50. And as you can tell, this um, graph paper is quite faint. So it makes it a little bit tricky for me here to show you. OK, so look at this. We have the scale, axes. My OCD is killing me, so um, I'm just going to correct that okay so axes um i've got my line and label i've got my unit got my title um i've checked its equal spacing we haven't done this but we haven't actually shown the line okay so if we think about this reaction so you have to put your um put some brain power into this so um if there was no reaction if the reaction hasn't started at all this plunger for the gas syringe wouldn't have been pushed out so the reading then when the reaction hasn't started it should be zero so even though they haven't recorded it um, particularly in their results we can assume then quite confidently that there's a point there but because it's not an actual um it's not an actual record and we can't actually do that. So I'm going to just use this red pen, draw it the best I can. So here we go. That will be my line of best fit. I'm hoping for you guys, you can draw it smoother than I can. OK, so um, what, what does this line of best fit tell me? Well, um, here... Um, where the reaction has started, um, the reaction is the fastest. And we can say it's because it's got the most change in the smallest amount of time or because it has a steep gradient. So as an easier way to think about it, the steeper it is, the faster. 
um, if it goes horizontal like this, um, it's actually stopped. So here the reaction has stopped. And then um, if we look at the progression, as the reaction goes on, it keeps slowing down until it stopped completely. OK, so I think I've shown here quite nicely, hopefully, how to draw a graph for a piece of data like this. In science, we call these scatter graphs, but sometimes they call it a line graph. But um, technically, it is a scatter graph. And what I've just drawn in red, that is the line of best fit. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see your um, examples of line graphs. Thank you.